Before the tutorial begins, I want to make you aware of an advanced version of the tool shown in this video, which also includes a basic mesh spline system and constant free updates, so if you're not interested in creating it or just don't have the time, go to my Unreal Engine store page linked in the description, and don't forget that by purchasing my products you are directly supporting me, which helps me make more videos like this one. Without any further interruptions, please enjoy the video. To get started, we're going to want to create a blueprint class, and it's going to be an actor. Measurement spline. Open that up. Once it's open, we're going to want to close the event graph because we don't need that right now. Right, so if you're not familiar with the construction script, this is basically just uh, an event that fires every time the uh, asset is updated. So, say you were to click on the spline uh, or move it around, that'll update this, which will fire. So first thing we're going to want to do is check whether we actually want to use the measurement system. So we might not want it on all the time. So we're going to check a Boolean value uh, and say if it's true. So this is going to be a variable. We're going to call this, uh, let's promote to variable and call it toggle measurements. It's going to be instance editable. So when you're inside the editor, you can just turn it on and off um, so you'll be able to see the measurements and create a variable and call it num of spline points and we're going to change this to be a integer and we're going to set this to the same value as the number of spline points first we're going to need to add the spline component drag that in so it gets a reference to it and go get num number of spline points and then we can literally plop this straight into here and that just sets this variable up so we can use this later down the line without having to keep doing this same code. So next we're going to want to loop through our number of spline points. For loop, just drag this out and just plug it into that. So next we're going to want to create a variable for the current point index. We'll go index and say promote to variable and call it current point index. Plug that into the loop body. And now we want to check that there are actually more spline points to uh, create text for. Get current point index. Uh, we'll say if it's not equal to the number of spline points, it's like saying that there are more spline points to create. If that's true, then we're going to fire off a bunch of stuff. Otherwise, just leave it blank. Right, so now we want to work out the segment length, the length between two spline points. So we, actually, we can set this as a root. Um, yep, there you go, so now it looks a lot neater. So we basically want to work out the length between each point. So what we're going to need is a variable to store the length between these two segments. So let's create a variable and call it se oh, segment length. Put uu at the end, just so we know that that's written in Unreal units, so that we know what we're doing later on when we convert it into metric. And this is going to be a float. So now we want to set that variable. So saying, assuming this is true. Right, so we're going to have to do a little bit of work now. So I'm going to drag this down here, just so we have more space to work with this. And we're going to say, uh, we want to get the distance along the spline point and take that away from the previous spline point to get the length. So we'll just do some work in here and I'll explain as we go. So we're going to get reference to our spline and say, get distance along spline at spline point. And then we can actually duplicate that. Control W. So we want to get the current point index which if you remember was set from this loop body here uh, so this is the current point index we want to plug that into there and then we actually want to take one from that and that will give us the previous spline point target again is going to be the spline take this float from this so what we can do is essentially get the length between these two points so now we can literally plug this straight into here to get the segment length, which is fine. But again, that doesn't tell us where about in the spline that we want to spawn the text. We're going to have to do a little bit more maths just to work that out. So if we get this and we divide that by two, what this will do is give us the middle distance between these two points. So what we're going to do now is add this, get the spline reference, get the location at distance along the spline point. Now we can finally take all our working. Let's actually get this location in local space to spawn our text. Distance, and there we go. So that, that's ready. So what we're gonna do is introduce a text vertical offset so that if the text is too low, we can manually adjust the height of that in case it's merging through something or it's just too low. 
So what we're going to do is create a variable and call it text vertical offset. So by default, we're going to set this to five. It's a nice distance above the ground. So what we're going to want to do with this is actually add it to our output vector here. We can split the struct pin because we're only changing the vertical offset. We only want the Z axis. So we're going to go plus our text vertical offset, add these two together. And then we want to recombine this, this vector, make vector. I'm going to plug the Z into here, X and Y, lovely. And so now we can actually finally add our text render component. We drag off of here and add text render component. We need to split our struct pin again, plug our location here into the location slot. However, now we're going to need a separate texture material because no text by default faces the camera. So we're going to have to customize our own. So if we go back into the main editor here, right click and create a material. We're just going to call this text facing screen. Right, so let's open this up, create a three vector. Uh, so this is going to be the main color of the text. We're just going to plug this into the base and emissive color. So it's going to be a plain white. You can change it to whatever color you fancy, but I'm just going to leave it white. So we also want to create a font sample. And now we can select the font that we want to use. Now these are visible for me by default, but you might have to do options and show engine content if the default fonts don't appear for you. So the one we're going to be using is Roboto Distance Field, which seems to work best for this case, which we are going to plug straight into a linear interpolate. Plug in the alpha into the font alpha. Constant A is going to be minus 90. Constant B is going to be 90. This defines the text from the background. So select the output here and choose blend mode. So that's got to be masked. And we're going to choose the opacity mask to be our lerp. Right, so for the world position offset, align mesh to the camera. Lovely job. Now we don't want it to plug into that. We want world position offset. So these two are the same values here. And then we want to create three, three vectors. Uh, we don't need to show these because they're not going to be used for our color values. So we can just hide them. So the first one's going to have a blue value of 1, the second one is going to have a red value of 1, and the third one is going to have a green value of minus 1. Let's plug these into the custom object basis, and there we go, that's it, that's all done. We don't need to do anything else for that, we can apply that and save it. What you should notice now is if you move the camera around, the text follows you. Back over to our measurement spline, and what we're going to want to do is create a reference for this text. So we're going to go promote to variable and we're going to call this text ref. So this is just so we can refer back to it. First of all, we're going to want to set its absolute position. So that way it doesn't wiggle around when we move the object. So we'll go set absolute new absolute rotation. So what we want to check is that when we've added our text render component that we actually have selected the correct material. So we're going to say text facing screen. Next, what we're going to want to do is set its world size, set world size, plug that into there, current segment length, get that so that this world size text will actually change depending on how long the segment is so that if it's a really long piece, you can see it from far away. So we're going to go times looped. So we want to create another variable here so that we can adjust the scale manually as well. Default size multi multiplier plug this into here and set its default value so you have to compile it to set the default value of a variable so we want to set this to 0.05 this just seems to work best for the scale of the spline and we just want to plug this straight into the value input of the world size node right so next we're going to want to use an enumeration just in case you added more measurement systems in the future so we're going to go back over to our main editor right click blueprints enumeration. We're just going to call this unit types. We're going to create two enumerations. First one's going to be called unreal units and the second one's going to be called metric. Right so back over to our measurement spline we're going to create a branch and we want to check if we're using unreal units. We also want to create a variable called unit types. We're going to change this to our enumerator which was unit types. So we want to get the variable and check if it is equal to Unreal Units. So this has got to be instance editable or public. So that way in the editor, you can change what is being viewed. So if this output is true, we want to uh, get the segment length, turn it into text to text, and we'll set the minimum and maximum fractional digits to two. So this way it sort of looks neat 
um, when it's being displayed in the interface so we can hide that again so then we want to convert this into a string and we're going to append the letters uu so when we're in the editor we can see that it's using unreal unit and now finally we want to turn it back to text and this is going to be the final output get our text reference so we want to set text and it's going to be our string here we can plug that back in to true that should be it for the unreal units that's all we have to do so if we are not using unreal units we're going to want to check if we are definitely using the metric system so let's say another branch so we want to copy that and check is it are they using metric if so we do need the segment length but we want to divide it by 100 that way we get an accurate representation of metric so we'll say to text again we're going to round it to two fractional digits we'll say to string we're going to append this time it's going to be m for meters and we're going to send it back to text finally we can just copy this from here and we want to set the text to be our output and just set our text to the output and plug this into true and that should be it that is the whole setup so if we go back into the main editor here we should see if we plop this into our world text will scale depending on the length of the spline and if you add more spline points you can see the text adds for that there you go that is the whole tutorial so if you have any questions leave them down below and let me know what you think and whether you think i should do any more things like this in the future cheerio